Okay, you can probably see the boxes behind me now. I'm really excited to open them up, check out what's inside, some of the new sports science gear that we have that I'll be featuring on this channel. Let's just move you guys right over here. Cool, that's good. All right, in the first box from Rogue, which I've already opened, sorry, but we've got the new Tib Trainer. Hooray! The Tib Trainer made popular by the Knees Over Toes guy. Coach Ben Patrick for training the anterior tibialis. And I've got a cool research idea that we may implement. Box number two from Rogue Fitness. Here we go, this is gonna require a tool. All right. So we've got these rogue sandbags. Got these because in my strength and conditioning class, we learn about strongman training. We talk about odd object training, but I don't have actual Atlas stones or big, heavy, odd objects that my students can throw around. So saw these uh, on Rogue's site. There's a better picture of them. You can get different sizes. And I'll fill them up with sand. And then next semester, when I teach the course again, we can have an Atlas stone hands-on practical session after we learn the importance of implementing odd object training and strongman type training. Next, we have the monkey feet or monkey foot, singular. It's like, a, it's like a way to put a dumbbell on your foot and then do a bunch of open kinetic chain movement. Most barbell and dumbbell lower leg training is done in a closed chain setting. So both feet are fixed on the ground. The distal portion of the limb is fixed, but open kinetic chain movements are important as well. And the monkey feet are going to allow me to do that. And specifically, let's open it up. Uh, it will let us do some hip flexor training. Where is the... Ah. Okay, monkey feet. Now these look silly. These look like a roller skate that you strap a dumbbell onto. All right, so this will allow us to strap dumbbells to the bottom of the foot. There's other ways to do it, right? Uh, more cheaply kind of DIY mechanisms, but this will let us do it easily. So we can train our hip flexors. Let's say that you're hanging from a bar, from a pull-up bar, you strap a dumbbell on your leg and now you can do hip flexor work, knee drives or knee lifts to really strengthen the hip flexors and hopefully increase or improve the knee drive in the running motion. Now, of course, biomechanically, we know that knee drive occurs uh, when you have a high level of force output into the ground. So it's more from the ground mechanics than it is from actually lifting the knees. However, when you fatigue in an endurance event or even in a middle distance event and possibly in sprinting events, we do see that the uh, knee height uh, decreases in the runners, right? Their form deteriorates and that knee drive is not uh, what it was at the start of the race. And so perhaps potentially increasing those hip flexors will help us to maintain good form so that we can uh, achieve optimal force output into the ground. With good biomechanics, better uh, force application would hopefully lead to better running times, even as you get tired. So we're gonna play around with that as well. Oh, this guy. Okay. Ugh. Ooh, Look at this. All right, it's from Catapult. This is exciting. And if you have used Catapult technology before, then you know what this might be. This is, this is a charging station for Catapult GPS units. So let's, um, let's open up that other box and take a look at the actual units. This is exciting. Let's take a look what's inside here. Got this nice catapult bag, carrying bag, a bunch of Polar heart rate monitors, the sports bras or the, the things that the catapult device goes into, 
and then the actual GPS units themselves. Okay, so as I open up some of these uh, components, I'll just tell you what we have coming up. So I was able to partner with our soccer team here at Loma. Uh, they are very forward thinking. And so I've been able to partner with them and to oversee the implementation of full GPS and heart rate monitoring during their practices and games. We're pretty excited to do that. And along the way, you better believe I'll be making videos about it to bring you guys along in the process. So here we have one of the IMUs, the wearable units. These contain GPS as well as three axis accelerometers so that we can tell uh, player speed, change of direction, whether there is an impact, how many Gs the players are experiencing. Pretty cool stuff. And they go right in here like that. Here is one of the, uh, they call them sports bras, but men and women wear them. They just hold the units. Let's see what they look like. Okay, nice. Feels like kind of like an Under Armour material. This one's an extra small. Okay, it says catapult on the front. And when these bad boys are charged, they just go right in here into the back. There we go. All right, now it's in place. And this is just turn it on like that. Ooh, look at that little battery, battery indicator. Very awesome, looks like we need to charge it. All right, pretty cool. So we have a full kit, a set of 30 GPS units, 30 polar heart rate monitors. Stay tuned if you guys want behind the scenes look and how I'm incorporating a new piece of sports science technology, something I actually haven't used before. I've read about it, I've studied it a lot, I've read the research, I've seen people implement it, my colleagues have. This is just one piece of tech that I have not yet had my hands on. A lot of my students have even gone on to run GPS for teams like San Diego Loyal or USA Rugby down in Chula Vista. I just haven't yet. So if you guys want to follow along in the process as I learn how to do it, and as we implement it, collect some sweet data and hopefully help to mitigate injury risk, prevent overtraining, and optimize training for our soccer teams, then you'll want to stay tuned for upcoming videos. All right, that's enough. Dr. Good in here, back. Have the bell.